Hey, how's it going, Dark Nerds? I am Didi Douchebag Mark, and welcome back to another Scrum the Delicious video. And in today's video, uh, <laughs> okay, yeah, that doesn't feel right considering how I'm about to start this video. Just, it's just way too much energy, man. Let's just dial it back a little. So yeah, Art Nerds, you probably read the title, and based on that, you may or may not have an idea what I want to talk about today. Well, I'll give a hint. There's two types of artists, whether you draw, paint, sculpt, sing, take feet pics, whatever. There's two categories of artists, those who are determined or driven, and those who are complacent or quitters. And my hope is, at the end of this video, I would have helped you, art nerd watching, to answer the question of what kind of artists you are. And in doing so, I also would have helped you to think about your next steps. Now before I jump face first into this thick ass bitch of a video topic, allow me to tell you how I came up with the video idea in the first place. And I'll be honest art nerds, and yeah I'm not afraid to tell the truth, my mind raised no bitch, I'll be very honest. As of me recording this audio, last week I wanted to quit. I wanted to quit art, I wanted to quit being Diddy Mark, I wanted to quit everything. Like, man, like whatever, you know what, let me take it back to the beginning. It was a Saturday evening, I think, and I just got charged my car insurance bill and I got the notification on my phone from my bank. And when I saw that, suddenly all the metaphorical bandages and duct tape of ego and self-belief I had been using to hold myself together up until this point couldn't hold anymore. I, I broke down. And I swear, art nerds, <laughs> don't clown me, I'm being vulnerable to you guys. But I broke down and suddenly I could feel how extremely exhausted I was from working doing Diddy Mark stuff for the past 12 hours straight that day and 100 hours straight that week and 14 hours straight every single day for the last year or year and a half or so that I've been doing this. I felt so exhausted, my body felt so destroyed and sore from the combination of working out 5 times a week and mostly getting 5 hours or 4 hours of sleep every night. And mind you, that's a eh, not that's a decent amount of sleep but it was never quality night's rest because I was so stressed from many other things in my life that were like on my mind so I never got an actual quality night's sleep. I was tired from the fact that I had applied to over 200 jobs in the last 2 months and heard nothing back from any one of them. And if you want more context on that, watch this video I made a few weeks back, but I was tired that I was also having so many issues with my immigration status in the United States. I was tired from the fact that since I can't work in the US for complicated immigration reasons, I'm super broke financially, like even to the point where I'm not eating as much as I need because I'm trying to conserve money. And my only sources of income that I've been surviving with, you know, Patreon and YouTube, not only are so fickle, but also so unreliable. And on top of that, they made pennies. I didn't even make close to minimum wage altogether and I worked like what 100 hours a week? It especially didn't help that I was losing a lot of patrons every month and I couldn't figure out why. It didn't matter how much I tried to add more value to it, it didn't matter. And even on top of all of that, for personal reasons that I won't go into, as of now I haven't seen my girlfriend of 3 years and my cat in 2 months. And even scarier, there's a very real possibility I wouldn't get to be with them ever again. And if you watch my videos or listen to my podcast, they're family to me. I'm happiest when I'm with them. The only happy moments in my life lately happen to be when I'm with them. Whew, my goodness, that is so depressing for a DD Mark video. But yeah, why do I tell you guys this stuff? It's not because I want your pity or sympathy. I especially do not want that. Please don't feel bad for me. <laughs> I mean, I easily could have traded out my time when I was drawing comic books to work on like soulless commissions and I would have made a good amount of money that way, but through my own decisions, it was not an avenue that I wanted to go down on. So yeah, I made these decisions, so don't feel bad for me. I mean, life's been beating my ass since I was born, so I'm kind of used to it anyways. <laughs> but basically, after my breakdown that was triggered by the metaphorical straw, you know, being the notification from my bank, that broke the metaphorical back, that is my mental fortitude. After sitting there for 30 minutes straight, staring at the space in between the atoms, I got my ass back up and sat back at my desk and resumed working. Later that night, I was looking at YouTube comments and I saw this one comment from one of you guys and for the life of me, I could not find that comment now so sorry whoever you are cause you're not gonna get a shout out unfortunately but it was someone essentially saying they struggle with determination and feeling determined to do what they feel they need to be doing to achieve their goals and they wanted me to make a tutorial for it and how to overcome that and at first I thought to myself I can't teach determination it's not something you teach but then this idea for this topic hit me cause to me at that time and to me now this video idea this topic it's the closest thing to teaching determination 
Essentially people, my point with this video is to help some of you as artists find direction, find a reason to keep getting back up even in your hardest time. So yeah, long ass intro aside, I'll put a timestamp so people can skip all that nonsense I just said, but yeah, let's go over this. Now I mentioned there's two types of artists to me and they're pretty self-explanatory. You're either driven and determined or you're complacent and a quitter. And if for some reason you don't know what that means, pause this video and take your dumb ass to Google and find a definition because I don't got time to do that here. Cool? Are we, we cool? <laughs> Everyone who's still watching, you following? Yeah, okay, let's keep going. Now, really quick, remember when we were kids or when we were younger? Or better yet, let me use myself as an example. I remember when I was a kid in Nigeria and when there was no power, which was most of the time, <laughs> I used to lay on my floor with my older brother and I'd be drawing my own shitty like X-Men and Spider-Man comics. And in that moment, I'd be daydreaming about when my comic book got a movie and I'd be invited to the premiere on the red carpet or I'd dream about going to my parents and telling them, look mom, look dad, my book sold 1 million copies. And I'd daydream about the reactions as well. I remember all those daydreams. I remember them being so beautiful. The only problem is, I didn't do anything to take myself from that daydreaming child on the floor to a published comic artist doing major signings or panels at Comic Con. Are you following me? Like, instead, I found myself 20 years old, three years into college, sitting in a microbiology lab, looking through a microscope, counting how many fucking legs this bacteria had, and studying for the goddamn MCAT exam. And in case you don't know, it's the exam you need to take and pass to get into medical school. So you see, I was living in a false narrative where I wasn't doing anything to take myself from that bright eyed kid drawing on the floor to a published comic artist, but I didn't know I wasn't doing that. Like I said, I was living in a false narrative where one day I would just magically wake up and I would have blown up as an artist. I mean, sure, now I'm actually doing the steps and I'm working towards that goal and I'm, you know, I'm currently 22 years old, but up until I was 20, I wasn't. You see, back when I was the complacent artist, the quitter, I wasn't doing anything, I was just sort of hoping. It's kind of like those people who say their dream is to be a YouTuber and then you ask them, well, how many videos have you uploaded? And then they say zero, you see? Or it's like people who dream of becoming musicians or rappers as kids. And you know, back then they used to imagine standing on a stage in front of a crowd of people who would sing the lyrics of their songs back to them. Or they'd imagine hearing their songs on the radio. But then 20 years later, all they've done is fantasize and they actually haven't done anything to take them from that daydreaming kid to the actual musician on stage. Same thing for people who wanna be actors or professional athletes. Like you feel me? It's very common to be stuck in that false narrative. It's so easy to daydream about the job and not do any of the work until worst case scenario, you're a 45 year old man with a house and three kids working a dead end job you despise. And at this point, you have way too many responsibilities to drop everything to actually take the steps to pursue a dream you'd only been fantasizing about so far in your life. So instead, you get so depressed, you either buy feet pics online or you subscribe to some random girls only fans and then message them thinking they're your girlfriend or whatever. Except in reality, you're probably texting some 29 year old guy who the only fans model hired to handle her messages. And deep down, you know, it's not her, you know, you're texting some guy, but for you, it's better than talking to your boring ex wife or your annoying kids. And it keeps you from putting a piece of steel in your mouth and squeezing till you hear a click. Jesus Christ. My God. <laughs> <laughs> I got so dark. I don't I don't know what came over me, but <laughs> <clears throat> so the first step to not be that complacent quitter and in turn the first step to being a driven determined artist or creative is to realize you have a finite amount of time and find out when that is. You're never too old to pursue a career as an artist, I always say, but that necessarily isn't true, especially if you want other things in life. For example, in my mid thirties, if art isn't working out, it doesn't make sense to keep pursuing it as a main thing. I have to relegate it to the side thing because at that time, I'd hope to have a family and a house with a mortgage and all that good stuff. So yeah, those main responsibilities will eat so much of your time. You really won't have enough spare time to dedicate to your passion, especially if your kids are like young or something. Don't get me wrong. It's not impossible to achieve your dreams in a situation like that. I mean, it's hard, but it's not impossible. Also, you have a finite time in the sense that none of us know when we're going to die. So yeah, that's kind of dark, but it's true. Anyways, moving on. The best thing you need to do to find direction as an artist and to become driven and determined is the most important one and it's to find out what you'd regret. Cause as I said earlier, when you get to that point in life when you realistically can't pursue that dream anymore, whether you have a family or you're on your deathbed or you're too old to be the star of a teen boy band, what you feel when you hit that point is regret. 
So my suggestion to you is think about what you regret. And I advise you close your eyes, and maybe this is a little dark, but ask yourself, if I were told I was gonna die in two weeks, what would I regret not doing or becoming? What comes to you when you think about that is the direction you should be going in as an artist and as a person in life. So you can avoid, as much as you can, avoid that horrible, terrible feeling of regret. I always say, and I've said it in previous videos, dream big, like dream as big as you can and work towards it. Cause if you fail, you won't have regrets in the sense that you at least tried your best and it didn't work out. So there's no like, what if? You see what I'm getting at? So to reassess that breakdown I had last week, how was I able to get back up again? No matter how many kick in the nuts and punches to the face life has given me up until now. Well, it's cause I don't want to regret anything. We all have one life to live. So for me, I don't want to lay on my deathbed regretful that there was something I wanted to do and I never did it, even if it was hard. Lastly, when you've figured out what you want to do as an artist or a creative, do the research of what it takes, then write down the steps you need to take to get to that destination and start taking those steps. Now that I've presented to you how to find direction as an artist, how to find your goal as an artist, I now want to give you some advice on things to look out for while you're on your journey. The first one is, you will encounter fears, distractions, and excuses. There are things or obstacles you face that may intimidate you or you may not want to tackle, whether it's drawing hands, perspectives, drawing faces, putting your work out there, emailing people or companies, it doesn't matter. You will come face to face with these fears. And my advice on how to overcome them is simple. Like an actor, I want you to act, art nerds. Act as if you had this superpower. Act as if you had the power that you were incapable of failure. Because in reality, these obstacles and fears and distractions are obstacles to you because you're afraid of failure. You're afraid of getting told no. You're afraid of losing. So pretend as if you were incapable of those things, incapable of failing, because you learn most of the time, even when you do fail, there's really nothing to lose. If anything, it's a gain, because you now have an opportunity to learn and do better next time. The next thing you're gonna have to look out for on your journey is, you're gonna need to learn to compromise because shit will be hard. I hate that so many people think when you find your passion, when you love what you do, it's not work anymore. Bullshit. Bullshit of the highest order. You might love it, but it's still work. When you learn to compromise, you won't run or buckle or fold or quit when things get hard. Most people on the planet have this problem. They might love drawing comics and making comic books, but then when things get difficult, maybe their publisher wants them to do like what, 30 pages before the end of the week. I bet you you're not gonna be feeling that love. <laughs> or or if you're an athlete and you have to wake up at 4 a.m. for six days a week and get, you have to get into the gym at first thing in the morning and you're there for a long ass time, I bet you're not gonna love it so much when you gotta do that, huh? Or if you wanna be a YouTuber and you, you know, after recording, you gotta edit for 20 hours that weekend or that week to get the video out on time, yeah, you won't be feeling the love then either. Like I said, most people I've met in my life have that problem of leaving or quitting when things get tough or, or they say stuff like, I need to reset my mental energy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't do that, I don't, I don't have this problem, and I'm rare for that, and that's not even a flex. I'm blessed because I'm naturally like that, but if you aren't naturally like that, you can learn to be. When things get hard, the thought of quitting might and faintly crosses my mind, but I don't. I get back up. Even if you pick a field or art path you love, it's not all gonna be fun and sunshine and rainbows, you're never gonna be 100% satisfied. So you can pick a path and nitpick the aspects you don't like about it, or you can just pick the path and you can be happy at the fact that you have a path that you've chosen. And lastly, I want to talk about self-belief or belief in oneself. This is one that I myself had to learn and it's as simple as questioning things. And when you do this well, it'll come off as ego, but I promise it isn't. Throughout our lives, a lot of us have placed rules on ourselves when there really wasn't any. For example, someone will say, I'm not really a creative type of guy. So I want you to question things in the sense of, well, says who? Who says you're not a creative guy? Or, or if you say stuff like, I'm not naturally artistic, according to who? You? Some douchebag teacher you had in middle school that said that nonsense? Why should their words or beliefs about you actually affect you? You're placing these rules on yourself when there are no rules. Say stuff you want, say positive things. The fact is we as people, we make decisions about things that we can and cannot do. So say things like, I'm a creative guy, or I'm an artistic person, or I'm good at math. When you start to believe these things that you say, it'll reflect in your actions and in your work. I promise you that. So before I end this video, again, what kind of artists are you? 
are you the complacent quitter kind? I mean, if your goal is to do art just for fun and not improve and paint pretty pictures for my living room, la 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 la, sure, you can be complacent, but if you want a life where you do this as a job or a profession because you love this, if you have big dreams to be like someone you admire, you should not be complacent. You should not quit when things get remotely difficult. You need to be driven and determined. And if you want it bad enough, you will be. I mean, look at Joji. I just literally got into his music. Like, a lot of you know him as Filthy Frank. Joji was famous being Filthy Frank. He was successful as f He could have just coasted with the fame and maybe the money, but he wanted something more. Joji was not complacent. He was driven and he was determined. Like, I'm glad he was. Have you heard Slow Dancing in the Dark or, or Gimme Love? Absolute hood classics, bro. <laughs> Thank you all for watching this sorta of long, but hopefully not too long video. And yeah, I'm sorry if I was way too dark with the humor and stories and stuff. This is a video I really want to make because I feel it'll help a lot of artists of all types in their journeys to achieve their dreams. Another thing I will say is, nothing in this world is guaranteed. You might work, work, and work more than anyone else out there and work harder than anyone else out there, but it might not still happen. And that sucks, but it's fine. I'm sure you guys already knew that, so I just wanted to mention it just in case. But yeah, shout out to my patrons for supporting the channel and producing this video. I truly appreciate them. They are the best. So yeah, now you guys know I'm genuinely not joking when I say that. Without them, I'd be starving. <laughs> <laughs> if you yourself want to support me on Patreon, the link is in the description down below. And yeah, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because that helps. Hit like on the video to let me know you enjoyed it. And don't forget to leave a comment because I read all and respond to most comments. Till next time, art nerds. Tis I, Mark. Peace and love, baby.